This is part six in our series of lectures on section 2.3, and in this lecture we're going to consider a proof involving a denumerable intersection of intervals. So this is the problem that we're going to consider. We take this intersection, it's a denumerable intersection of open intervals, and we want to first of all figure out intuitively what we think that intersection is, and after we come up with that conjecture, we want to write a proof that in, that is in fact the case. So if we write out a few terms in the intersection uh, corresponding to n equals 1, it's the in open interval from 0 to 2. Um, corresponding to n equals 2, it's 1 plus a half, which is 3 halves, the open interval from 0 to 3 halves. If n is 3, 1 plus a third is 4 thirds, so it's the open interval from 0 to 4 thirds. Um, etc. So what is it you're actually doing when you're calculating this intersection? You're finding the points that are common to every single one of the sets in this sequence of sets. So the intersection is typically smaller than any of the terms in the sequence. So you'll notice that as you move from left to right, the sets actually get smaller in size. So when you intersect, you have to get less and less things. So what do the right-hand endpoints seem to be converging to? Two, three-halves, four-thirds, five-fourths. Maybe it's better to look at it as one plus one over n. As n gets bigger and bigger, this seems to be converging to one, but it's always a little bit bigger than one. So that means that um, since these numbers on the right are moving closer and closer to 1, you can't expect in the intersection to have anything to the right of 1 um, in the intersection. So at most you're going to get an interval from 0 to 1. Uh, the question is, is 1 included in the intersection? And you can see that um, since n is positive, 1 plus 1 over n is always bigger than 1, and therefore 1 lies in every single one of these sets. So it does appear that 1 will also be in the intersection. And therefore we would expect that the intersection of all these intervals is going to be the interval from 0 to 1, where we don't include 0, but we do include 1. So there you have our conjecture. And so we know in our heart that that has to be correct, um, but that doesn't make it true. And in fact, when we write up the proof, we'll find that the actual proof has nothing in common at all with what we did in coming up with our conjecture. What we do is we just simply prove that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side, and the right-hand side is a subset of the left-hand side. So please put your video on pause and see if you're able to follow through on that technique of proving equality of these sets. I think you'll find that when you do it, you're going to find it a little bit more difficult to prove that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. And you're going to have to make use of that result that I did two videos ago uh, that I referred to as a simple but useful result. And my suggestion uh, when you apply that result will be to do a proof by contradiction. So that's a, uh, that's a hint. But once again, all you're going to use in either direction is uh, just simply the working definitions of this denumerable intersection of sets and um, this half-open, half-closed interval. Nothing more than working definitions. So give it a try, and when you come back, you can have a look at my solution. Okay, so here's the proof of what I would consider to be the harder direction of the proof, the one in which we show that this thing is a subset of this interval. <clears throat> so let's begin by taking an x in here. Let x be an element of the left-hand side. The working definition of that is that for every natural number n, x lies in the set corresponding to that natural number. So in other words, for every natural number n, 
x is strictly positive and smaller than 1 plus 1 over n. Now I want to show that x lies in 0, 1. So in order to do that, I'm going to argue by contradiction. Suppose x doesn't lie in the interval from 0 to 1. Well, that means x is either less than or equal to 0 or strictly bigger than 1. It can't be less than or equal to 0 because of this assumption here. So that means that x must be um, bigger than or equal, uh, strictly bigger than 1. And since x is strictly bigger than 1, that means x minus 1 is strictly positive. Now I'm going to apply that result from a couple of lectures or videos ago, which says that when you have a positive number, you can always find something of this form in between it and 0. So I'm going to apply that to the number x minus 1. Um, since x minus 1 is positive, by that result, there exists a natural number n such that x minus 1 is bigger than 1 over n. And what that says is, when you bring the minus 1 to the right, that x is bigger than 1 plus 1 over n. Now that's a contradiction, because we've said above that for every natural number n, x lies between 0 and 1 plus 1 over n. And here you see we've produced a specific natural number n for which that's not the case. So since that's a contradiction, that shows that x must therefore be an element of 0, 1. And therefore we've managed to show this inclusion here. Okay, so that's the difficult direction because it wasn't obvious that we should be applying that uh, result from a couple of videos ago to the number x minus 1. But that's in fact what seemed to work. Okay, let's now do the um, finish up the proof by looking at the other inclusion. Okay, I think this direction is fairly straightforward. We next prove the opposite inclusion. So we take an x in here. Let x be in the left-hand side. Then, this is the working definition. And so for every natural number n, x is bigger than 0, less than or equal to 1, which is itself smaller than 1 plus 1 over n. And since x is bigger than 0 and smaller than 1 plus 1 over n, it follows by definition that x lies in that interval for every n. And therefore, by definition, it must lie in the intersection of all of those sets. It all comes down to that quantifier, for every. So now we've shown this inclusion, and therefore the desired result follows.